Molotov and Gozo, and welcome to another edition of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Jonathan Chilia, joined by my co-host, Sam Vassallo, and here are your headlines for today. Malta hits 940 active COVID-19 cases in largest single-day rise yet. Miriam Dalli, rumored to take Joseph Muscat's parliament seat. Education minister urges schools to keep windows open, even when it rains. Two flamingos fear dead after thieves scale Adira reserve fence. And PS5 scammers pose as Berzabuja store and fool thousands. Sam, quite a mix of stories today. We've got politics, we've got flamingos, we've got PlayStation 5s. Indeed, super spicy, super interesting. Let's get right into it. <laughs> so jumping into the first one, obviously, big news. I'm sure you heard about it. Malta's now got 940 active COVID-19 cases yesterday. So today, it's expected that Malta will hit 1,000 active cases, four digits. The first time since the pandemic st started in Malta that we'll have over four digits worth of active cases. Um, very, very shocking, of course. Yesterday, 111 new cases were found alongside 52 recoveries. Um, but, you know, we're about to hit four digits. Sam, what do you make of this? It's pretty insane. I mean, unofficial sources, cough, cough, Gerald Fennec, said that uh, <laughs> we're expecting you know, another large rise, which comes to no surprising as it's been consistently um, rising in the past week. We also had a death yesterday. Yes. Um, there was an ITU patient, a 59-year-old man, who passed away, who tested positive for COVID-19. I mean, you know, schools have officially now all opened. We expected, uh, you know, a, a surge in cases. Now it's just about how we deal with it. We need to continue listening to, to, to um, health authorities and keep going on with our lives as, as, as best as we can, you know, despite this. That's exactly it. I mean, like we said, you know, today's cases haven't been confirmed yet, but if there's anything over 60, we will be hitting 1,000 cases. Um, I don't really expect Malta to return to the fear that we had back in March and April when the outbreak started. However, obviously, schools just opened last week. Um, uh, there are serious guidelines happening right now, um, so expect probable new guidelines to appear after we hit 1,000 cases. Moving on to the next story of today. Yes, a spicy one indeed. So, Miriam Dalli is set to take Joseph Muscat's parliament seat. Prime Minister Miriam Dalli, one day, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> so, sources say she's accepted to take uh, Joseph Muscat's seat. May I remind you, he resigned uh, just a week ago. There is um, you know, rumor that there's going to be a possible major cabinet reshuffle. You know, she's, she's a big player on the European level and, and, of course, on a national level. She's rumored to be taking a high-profile position, uh, whether in cabinet or even the prime minister's um, office. May I remind you, uh, Dali, was, Dali had the, first, the most first count votes in 2019 MEP election. Mm -hmm. she, was at the she is at the forefront of many issues like the environment. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see where she goes. I mean, may I remind you, the nationalists could have had a, a, a female leader, Roberta Metzala, and yet, um, you know, they, they, they opted her out and <laughs> went with uh, Bernie. Well, we still need to give them a chance, but I think it was still a major blow for them. Yeah, um, so Miriam Dali, obviously, as you said, super popular, very beloved, actually. She's a very, very popular politician. Obviously, she's been in Brussels as an MEP, working hard for a few years, so you don't really see her much on the ground in Malta. However, if these rumors are to be believed, and she will be heading back, taking a seat in Parliament, I mean, we could see her go all the way to the top. We'll see. Um, but it wasn't only her that, uh, that was in the rumors this week. Um, another major female politician, um, former Gozo minister, Justine Caruana. It's rumored that she might be resigning her seat as well. And not only that, Etienne Grec, another MP, resigned as well, but not related to corruption or anything like this, due to personal reasons. So a bit of a merry-go-round when it comes to the MPs um, in the government right now. But moving on, talking about ministers anyway, moving on to the next story. Um, <laughs> going back to the guidelines. So. Recently, Education Minister Owen Bonici had a bit of a debate with PNMP Clyde Pooley about, you know, COVID-19 guidelines, red lines, and how schools are approaching this. And the topic of what schools and vans should do when it starts raining came about. Um, and the Education Minister made it very clear. If it's raining, you can't close the window if you're in a classroom. You can't close the window if you're in a van. Um, it's expected that you keep the windows open for ventilation, for cross-ventilation. 
Um, and he came out quite strongly about this. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. Obviously, I understand the idea of having cross ventilation, but like, if it's raining super hard, and the vans are picking up all the kids and they're going home, are we really expecting all the vans to keep the windows open? I mean, the kids are going to get the flu. The kids are going to get soaked. Their masks are going to be completely wet. Um, I mean, I. I just feel so sorry for these <laughs> kids. Like, I mean, you know, masks in school, you know, you have the class bubbles, you have, you know, you have to clean your desk every day, you have to take these precautions, you can't hang out with the friend that you want to, and now you might be going home wet, you oh know? No. Like, give the kids a break, my God. I mean, you know, they just need to play. Luckily, Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande came out to that amazing banger, Rain On Me. They can blast that on the way home, and good luck to the kids, unfortunately. <laughs> So let's move on to uh, the next story. But before that, we do have a video, don't we, about... Exactly. Before we move on to the next story, we have a video actually of the education minister talking about this, so we're going to cut to that really quickly. <laughs> Fistam am not banali din imma dan ordu ċempru lna numru ta' ġenituri illi u anke llima illi s-sitwazzjoni li jiġifieri hemm sfidi anke f'dan ir-rigward għaliex aħna rridu nżommu twieqi miftuħin fil-basis fil-klassijiet il-kesħa jgħidi jiġifieri iva ver jiġifieri xatt jagħmel il-gvern dan ir-rigward il-protokoll tal-awtorità tas-saħħa jgħid illi twieqi għandhom ikunu miftuħin minħabba l-ventilazzjon dik hija ċara jiġifieri dik hija waħda mir-regoli li rridu nużaw u aħna rridu nobdu ma' dawn ir-regoli li tal-ma li ħadd mwiet jgħid biex ma jħdux il-pari tal-awtorità tas-saħħa. Għax u mbagħad jiġi klajt kuli, jgħid li minn tiġi qed togdi l-protokoll għax minn tiġi preparat. Tas-sigur. To our next story, uh, two flamingos are feared dead after thieves scale Adira reserve fence. Indeed, so two juvenile flamingos are feared stolen or dead after a suspected robbery uh, last night. So one to two people entered Adira reserve um, just after three flamingo birds were released as part of a re rehabilitation um, program. Police are investigating the situation. I mean, you know, we've, we've just been talking about Malta's reserves and, 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 and woodlands. Um, Mizib and Lakharash, as you know, was handed over to, to hunters this week. I'm not sh obviously, I'm not, I'm not trying to assume that, th that this was a hunter or, or anything of the sort, but you know, it's in the light again, we have to talk about it, and, and this isn't the first time, no, that, that these, some animals have been stolen. Not okay. at all. I mean, just last month, there was a, a bit of a shocking break-in to the Barn Owl Regeneration Project in Busquet. Um, video caught a man breaking in, taking some barn owls, and he even surgically altered them after he stole them. Fortunately, he was caught. When it comes to um, the recent, these two flamingos in Adira, um, it, it's important to know that it's believed that the suspects used wooden planks to scale the fence and footprints were found on islands that the flamingos live on that humans generally don't access. So it's, it's very clear that a couple of people broke in, scaled the fence and took these fl flamingos. Um, just generally though, like Maltese people, are obviously it's a tiny subset of people, but there seems to be a group of people that just can't get it in their head when it comes to protected birds. Um, birds that you're not allowed to touch or hunt or, or, or that we're actually trying to regenerate. We're protecting them for a purpose. We've got these nature reserves for a purpose. The idea that you'd actually plan with someone to break into a reserve to take a couple of birds that you know are already in a dangerous situation, their numbers are not so high, and you're just going to take them for your own purposes. You've got to be quite sick in the head. So I hope that the police do find the, pe the people behind this and that we start seeing less and less of these situations because they really are not on. Um, moving on to the last story of today, a bit of a, a crazy story. I'm not surprised though. So the Sony PlayStation 5 will be released soon um, on the 19th of November. There's a lot of hype about it. You know, a lot of people want to get their hands on this. This is the next generation of consoles. Sam, are you excited about it? No. <laughs> But thousands of people are, and these people actually got tricked into sharing a scam post on Facebook, um, promising them a chance to win a PlayStation 5. So um, a page called Daily Deals with a nice white logo with a bit of red, um, you know, told people share, like, like this uh, status, like our page and share this, and you'll be in with a chance to win a PlayStation 5. The problem is, their logo was based off an actual Burzabuja store called D Daily Deals with a white logo and a bit of red. And the store actually took to Facebook to say, guys, 
do not believe this post. It's not us. It's a fake page. Um, don't share it. Ignore it. However, people's desperation spoke loudly, and the post actually got 40,000 shares. Um, thousands of Maltese people, as well as international people, sharing it. Um, it just goes to show how desperate some people are to get the PlayStation 5. I mean, it seems like um, it's already sold out on a lot of websites. It's not that cheap, but people are willing to spend a pretty penny for it. I think it just proves that, you know, books are better than video <laughs> games. I'm not going to brag over there, but uh, I am an OG, like, PS1 fan, to be fair. Are you? But, uh, yeah, yeah, I like, I, like, I like collecting those, you know, vintage games, and I used to play it back in, wow. back in the day. OG. Um, this almost sounds like a satire <laughs> story. I can't <laughs> believe this, but um, I guess it shows that you need to check your sources and don't trust everything you see on the internet. Damn right. And on that note, from both myself and Sam, have a day full of loving.